This is Dr. Red Panda. Hi fellow humans, I'm Dr. Red Panda. One day, I went to the public toilet and when I was about to leave, I had an embarrassing experience. The toilet didn't have toilet paper and I didn't bring any with me. Oh no, is there anything more tragic in the world than this? At that moment, a question suddenly popped into my head. How did people wipe their butts before toilet paper was invented? Without further ado, let's get to the point. In fact, before toilet paper became universally used, people in different parts of the world used a variety of methods to wipe their butts. Since Europe is an important birthplace of modern civilization, let's start with Europe. Legend has it that a common toilet paper substitute in ancient Rome was a stick-like object called a tersorium, also known as a xylospongium. Simply put, it was a stick with a piece of sponge soaked in vinegar or salt water attached to one end. Public toilets at the time had a small trough below them. It is generally believed that the trough contained constantly flowing water and the tersorium was kept in the water. It was then used after using the toilet. However, the problem is that archaeologists are not sure whether this thing is used to clean up the feces stuck to the toilet after use or to clean the person who has just defecated. In other words, if it is used to wipe the butt, the sanitary conditions are a bit terrifying. In addition to the tersorium, there is another confirmed toilet paper substitute that was used in ancient Rome and Greece, the pessoi. These were typically smooth, round, or oval-shaped pebbles. Archaeologists have found a variety of pessoi in the ruins of ancient Greek and Roman toilets. For example, the one pictured above is 3 to 10.5 centimeters in diameter and 0.6 to 2.2 centimeters thick. The size of pessoi varied, but they all had rounded edges to minimize damage to the buttocks. A very interesting image of a pessoi in use can be found on a Greek drinking cup in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. The cup dates back to the 6th century BC and was discovered in Orvieto, Italy. The cup depicts a man squatting, his shirt pulled up, one hand on a stick for balance, and the other hand holding a pessoi to clean his buttocks. Afterwards, when people observed the surface of pessoi under a microscope, they also found solidified and mineralized human excrement, which is enough to confirm that ancient Greeks and Romans did use it to wipe their butts. Some scholars believe that ostraca, which were small pieces of broken pottery used by the Greeks to vote and banish citizens, could also be used as pessoi. The pottery would have the name of someone the user hated written on it. This would be similar to writing the name of an enemy on a voodoo doll with the intention of harming them. It is also similar to the practice of printing the image of someone on toilet paper today. By the way, people have found ostraca with the names of Socrates, Themistocles, and Pericles in Athens and Piraeus. However, just by looking at the pictures, it is clear that this would not be a very comfortable thing to use. No matter how much it is polished, its edges will never be 100% smooth. Long-term use could lead to local skin or mucosal damage, and even external hemorrhoids. Even so, these ceramic pieces would have been a luxury item at the time. The ancient Greeks had a proverb that encouraged frugality, which roughly translates to three stones are enough to wipe your butt. It seems that hemorrhoids were still a disease of the wealthy in those days. After discussing ancient Greece and Rome, let's go back to medieval Paris, France. There was no concept of toilets there, or rather, the whole of Paris was a big toilet. In his book, An Underground Education, American scholar Richard Zacks describes the streets of Paris in 1270 as being filled with the stench of poop and that people would be splashed with sewage from their upstairs neighbors if they weren't careful. With such a casual attitude towards poop, it's no wonder that people weren't very gentle with their butts either. In the late Middle Ages, the French royal family used a crude hemp rope to wipe themselves. The rope hung from the ceiling of the luxurious European toilet to the side of the toilet. After defecating, the person would put the rope between their legs and rub it back and forth. It sounds painful, doesn't it? What's even more interesting is that this hemp rope was shared. The emperor used it, the queen used it, and the ministers used it. It was never replaced, and it was used until it broke. It's safe to say that medieval France inherited this tradition of shared wiping tools from ancient Rome. After talking about France, let's talk about Wild Russia. The material used by the Russian royal family to wipe their butts is actually goosenecks. After each member of the royal family finishes using the toilet, his attendants will slaughter a goose and then cut off the goose's neck for the royal family members to wipe their butts with. In the French novel, The Story of Gargantua, the protagonist Gargantua once described, of all the things used to wipe the buttocks, nothing is better than a plump gooseneck. 
the buttocks can feel a kind of pleasure, both the softness of the fur and the warmth of the goose's body. The rest is up to you to think about. However, from another perspective, this would require killing a goose every time you go to the toilet. What if the czar had diarrhea? Oh, I really dare not think about it. Compared to the meticulous attitudes of the royalty and nobility, the commoners in these two nations probably didn't bother too much about wiping. After relieving themselves, they would either pull up their pants and go, or use whatever materials available nearby, such as leaves or straw, it was all very rustic. Speaking of Europe, how can we not mention the ancient Norse Vikings? They had a fondness for squatting in a row and using sheep's wool to clean themselves. Imagine a piece of wool, warm from your body heat, soft to the touch. The moment it contacts your skin, a comforting warmth seems to sink into your very soul. This must have been a delightful experience for humans. It's just a shame for the sheep that were shorn. Compared to other European countries, which are known for their wildness, Britain, which is also located in Europe, is much more reserved. They have learned from the experiences of France and Rome and have made major innovations in both toilet facilities and toilet paper. In the early days, London was built with many castles. To solve the problem of using the toilet in the castle, the British chose to build independent bathrooms on the edge walls of the castle. They also followed the Roman sanitation model and built a sewer system through which all the excrement in the castle could be drained into the moat. The civilized British royal family, of course, would not use coarse hemp ropes or sponges to wipe themselves. According to records, before the 15th century, the British royal family mainly used fresh salmon slices to wipe themselves. Salmon, also known as expensive salmon, was something that commoners could not even afford to eat, let alone use to wipe their butts. So, a single trip to the toilet for the British royal family cost the average citizen several days of living expenses. It is said that salmon has the effect of removing odor and eliminating hemorrhoids, which is also the reason why the British royal family used it as a wiping tool. However, this has not been scientifically proven. At this point, I am planning to tell my friend this cold knowledge the next time I invite her to eat sushi. I think she would thank me. However, the toilet environment for commoners in medieval Britain was not so good. Most of the London residents chose to use the toilet on London Bridge, and the excrement directly fell into the river from the bridge. As a result, the boatmen at that time did not like to go under the bridge, and even a proverb was spread, smart people pass over the bridge, fools pass under the bridge. Ordinary British civilians used old wool and rags to wipe their butts which were thrown away after use. It sounds similar to our current toilet paper, at least much more hygienic than other European countries. In contrast to the wildness of Europe in the Middle Ages, many Asian countries of the same period had already adopted relatively civilized wiping tools. Especially in ancient China, according to historical records, the main wiping tool for Chinese people before the Ming Dynasty was still toilet strips, which is a long and thin bamboo stick. After using the toilet, use the toilet strips to scrape the butt clean. Even in wealthy families, using strips is very particular. Not only the material of the strips is good, but also spraying perfume is considered a high-end enjoyment. It is very interesting that the used toilet strips are actually a Chinese medicine. The ancient Chinese medical book Compendium of Materia Medica clearly records that the used toilet strips can cure difficult labor and cholera. Well, I won't continue to explore the mysterious medicine of the ancient East. Speaking of China, let's now turn our attention to Japan, a country renowned for its astonishing creativity. According to the tale of Genji, the Japanese royals used cicada wings to wipe their bottoms. Since cicada wings are quite hard, they are typically soaked in warm water for three days after capture until they soften enough to be used. However, considering the small size of cicada wings, their use for this purpose no doubt requires skill, prompting me to harbor a smidgen of respect for the royal family members of that era. Are there any affordable and preferably free options? Actually, there is. Indians have always considered the left hand to be unclean from ancient times to the present. Therefore, such dirty things as defecation are naturally dealt with by the dirty left hand. Specifically, after the matter is resolved, use the left hand to dip a little water and clean directly. Then wash your hands repeatedly with water and finally use your nose to smell to check if there is still any odor. It is precisely because of this habit that many toilets in India to this day do not have toilet paper. On the contrary, the standard configuration is a bucket filled with water and a ladle. It is similar to the intelligent water flush toilet seat of today.
Obviously, the effect of washing with hands and water is much better than toilet strips and toilet paper. Therefore, Indians generally do not have hemorrhoids. Having seen the tools used by different countries in the past to wipe their butts, we must thank Kimberly Clark, the company that first introduced toilet paper in the world. In 1924, Kimberly Clark launched the world's first facial tissue. Since then, consumers have had a soft, comfortable, and clean wiping tool after using the toilet. Therefore, Kimberly Clark was selected by Business Week as one of the 100 most valuable brands in the world. However, even in today's society, there are still many public toilets that do not provide free toilet paper. This also leads to many people facing immense embarrassment after a comfortable trip to the toilet, such as me. In the end, do you know how I got out of the toilet? This little problem was no match for me, this genius. The answer is that I took off a sock. Well, this episode of the video is over. What would you do if you didn't have any paper? If you have a good solution, or if you think there is any error in the video, please leave a comment in the comment section for discussion. If you think you like this video, please like, subscribe, and turn on the bell. See you next time.